Let me show you what has been happening with us this year. It's a lot of work, but I'm very happy with it. Um, we moved our, the program that you did, Claudia, we moved it to a platform. Now it's online yes. in this platform called Hotmart. Now you're seeing it like, like the students see it. Uh, and all the information is there. Uh, all the audio files and the listening and the the stories. Oh, something happened. Is Claudia there? Claudia, yes, Claudia left. Oh, I don't know what happened. <laughs> I don't know. Um, we'll wait for for Claudia to join yes, again. I. I <laughs> you sent me a, a proposal for personal class is yeah is pending in yeah this week we, we I work con, confirm right mm -hmm. okay. in, in other time tell uh, mm -hmm. uh, your podcasts your classes online ah the in YouTube, the, the, the reading uh -huh. is excellent tools. The oh, thank you. In in, in, in YouTube, uh, the, the 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 name what is is on YouTube. A reader language language, language reader uh, reader. Yeah. Ah, the the language Recorder. reactor. Reactor. Yes. Reactor. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excellent for, for reading. Reactor. For, it's really good. It's really good. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for your uh, tips. For your tips. <laughs> of course. There's another one that I really like. I will show you um, later. It's called Transy. And with Transy, you can practice speaking and the uh, artificial intelligence analyzes your pronunciation. It's really good. Uh, but yeah, Claudia, I wanted to show you because all the information yeah, that you had with the program is here. All the yes, this is, a, this is a, a new platform, yes? This is a new platform, but it's the same information. Some some of the classes I recorded again for better quality and better information, and there's other activations. Um, but remind me because you have lifetime access to these platforms. So every time that we make updates and that we improve the program, you have access to that. Um, so, uh, just remind me, text me and I will send you the access. And this one has the website, so you can do it on the computer, but it also has the app on the phone. And the app is really nice because you can just see things. Okay, so, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, so like if you want to review, maybe you don't want to see the whole program, but you want to review something specific, like maybe the questions or something like that. So you can go directly to that class and and move. And it has subtitles now and everything. So it's, it's pretty nice. So, so yes, it's, it's, it's very similar to the WhatsApp mm -hmm. program in the, mm -hmm. the after years anteriores <laughs> years before years before yes yes it's, it's just now more easy. organized and easy to mm -hmm. navigate so um i just wanted to begin with with that uh and then omar if you also want to join this you're more than welcome i'll also give you access um okay so some tips for us, we're going to develop this together, um, which is something that I really like to do. So today we're going to discuss some do's and some don'ts. Do's are things that we want to do, definitely. And don'ts are things that we want to avoid, evitar. OK. You know, we don't want to do these things. And some of these things come from my experience teaching. Um, uh, some of these come from my experience learning. Uh, and we're going to integrate um, 
the artificial intelligence in into this so that you can make exercises and after today you feel more confident and ready to learn if i am speaking very fast you can tell me repeat or you can tell me to change the conversation to spanish um just tell me uh whatever however you're comfortable or more comfortable uh so let's begin with the don'ts um so i'm going to tell you some stories uh these are funny stories but uh they're really important for for my strategy and learning English in a very efficient manner. So my first story was with uh, my bilingual school. I don't know if I told you before that I went to a bilingual school uh, here in Bogota. Uh, and when I was learning English uh, as a kid, I was very bad. I was the worst in my classroom. In fact, um, we had to pass some exams, some international exams, uh, to be able to continue in the school. If you, they gave you three chances to pass the exams. If you didn't pass uh, after the three chances, you could not continue in the school. Um, and so the first time, of course, I failed. Uh, the second time I failed. And guess what? The, the, the third time I also failed. <laughs> uh, but luckily, uh, this was the same time that I was moving to the United States. So they didn't kick me out of the school. They, they knew that I was going to learn. Uh, but, but yeah, I failed the exam. So I was very bad. And I think that one of the reasons why I was very bad is because traditional education sometimes is very bad in some ways. One of the ways that traditional education is not great is because it makes learning very artificial. So this is number one. We want to avoid artificial uh, situations. Okay. What do you think I mean by artificial? No real. Yeah, but uh, in, in learning, what is something that is not real? Can you think of an example of something that is not real? Omar, you are an engineer, right? Yes. And you had to study math a lot. Yes. What are some things in math that are not real that you learn but really they're not really <laughs> useful in real life the integral yeah formula integral don't use in your work <laughs> right, right, right. Um, or for example, when you study physics and they tell you, oh, don't worry about the wind, don't worry about resistance, oh, don't, you know, like these things are not real because in real life, of course, there is wind and of course there is resistance. The same thing happens in English. There's many things that are very artificial in the way that we learn. Uh, for example, when they give you a worksheet, um in school uh these type of exercises that tell, they tell you fill in the blank uh and this is actually the way that duolingo works you know they say multiple yeah. choice or or these things so of course you will learn if you repeat these exercises and you do them even though for some people these are boring for some people these are fun exercises if you repeat them and you do them and you pay attention you will learn but it's not a very efficient way of learning um, because it's not similar to the real life it's not similar to the real life of you as a learner and it's not real english either because uh, these exercises tend to simplify language. So la, let's look at a real example of this. Um, 
I'm going to show you how. So I'm not only interested in criticizing the, the learning, but I am interested also in showing you how you can make it better. So let's look at a, a, at a real example. Uh, I, I just opened an exercise a website. This is a real website to learn English. I just found it Googling, hey, exercises for the simple present. Uh, and so this is like what traditional education will will do. They say, hey, write the, the correct conjugation in the blank. Um, so do you want to try this one, uh, Omar? London, and then conjugate this one in the blank. Uh, in present? Yeah, in the present. London is in England. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful. Okay. So, of course, if you if you do this exercise and you practice practice practice, you will find your mistakes and you will get good at at learning. But there's a better way of of doing this. And the better way is to actually you yourself to create these sentences. Um not filling in the blank, but creating the sentence. So, can you give me this same sentence, but about you? Do you live in London? No, I I don't live in London. Where do you live? I I live in Bogota. Beautiful, exactly. So can you give me the same sentence, but with Bogota? Bogota is in Colombia. Yeah, beautiful, excellent. This is a much better exercise for you because mentally you are associating things that have to do with you, with your life. Maybe you don't care about cities. Maybe you don't care about geography. Maybe you don't care about describing where Bogota is because everybody that you talk to knows that Bogota is in Colombia. So maybe you want to create a different sentence with is. Um, so tell me something important for you, maybe your wife. Maybe you can tell me where is your wife. Uh, uh, where it, in this moment? Where where is Claudia? Yes, yeah, in this moment, yeah. Uh, uh, Claudia is staying in in, uh -huh. in in her work. Yeah, it's at work. Good. So you can create your own sentence. But before, um, traditional education had these exercises because if I make a student write their own sentence, probably the student will make mistakes. And if the student makes mistakes, um, then the teacher has to do a lot of work to correct the mistakes. And so they made this very standardized so that it's easy to correct because before there wasn't technology, but today there is technology. So suppose that you make a mistake. Now you don't need the, the, the teacher to be there with you. Suppose that you say, uh, Claudia is in the work. Suppose that you wrote this sentence. So now you have this amazing tool, any of these uh, artificial intelligence, the chat GPT is one of them, but um, you could say, hey, please correct my errors in English. So you give them the sentence and now the artificial intelligence tells you, no, listen, the correct sentence is Claudia is at work. Okay. Claudia and is at work. In, in some, uh, in, in Google, uh, some correct, uh, correct in, in, in English, in, in some uh, files, yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Correct. The, the, uh, yeah. Sometimes it tells you, no, it's not in the work, it's at work. Mm -hmm. So um, my suggestion is to avoid 
artificial situations. If you're going to do a worksheet, OK, do the worksheet, but turn the exercise of the worksheet and make it about you. What is the action? Do you how often do you talk about driving or opening or having? Think about the frequency and the use. So you want to make it about you, but you also want to prioritize. So we're going to say that one do for you, one thing that you should do is prioritize. It's the same thing like work. If you do everything, maybe you're not very efficient. You need to prioritize. So how do you prioritize? Think about the frequency of use in your life, not in the life of the teacher, in your life. How frequent do I use this word? You know, maybe how frequent, Omar, for example, do you talk about driving? A bit. A bit, a bit of no, 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 no much. Not very much, but mm -hmm. um, and and do you talk about driving more frequent or less frequent than freezing, congelar? More, more frequent, right? Yeah. So now you can prioritize. This is more important for me. This one I don't need. <laughs> yes, uh, I don't need to talk about freezing. Maybe you can learn it, but um, that's not very efficient. Let's focus on the vocabulary that will be important for me. By frequency, that's one of the ways you can prioritize. The second way that you can prioritize is by relevance to me. Yeah. What is relevant to you? Maybe your work is relevant. Maybe learning about soccer because you're a big soccer fan and you want to watch international games and understand the narration. Maybe that's important to you, but not for Claudia. So you and Claudia shouldn't have the same relevance. You know, the type of vocabulary that you need to learn. You don't teach integrals to an uh, eight year old because they're not really going to understand and it's not going to be efficient. They're going to get frustrated. The same thing for you. You want to focus on the words that are relevant to your level. You don't want to learn a super, super advanced word that uh, maybe a PhD in physics would use because that's not relevant to you. So let me ask you, what topics are relevant for you at the moment, Omar? Uh, in this moment, my priorities is green hydrogen. Is hydrogen? Hydrogen. Green hydrogen. What, what is again? Green hydrogen. Green hydrogen. Yes, is green hydrogen is my new obsession oh wow <laughs> it's my passion is the is the next step in the renewable energies okay great and so a great exercise for you is to focus on 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 that so let's do an experiment let's um let's go i this is one of the exercises that i i think are great um green hydrogen so I go on Google and I, I type green hydrogen. And then I go here choo, 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 and I go on news. And I see what articles today are talking about green hydrogen, green hydrogen, this one, Reuters, great website. So now we can begin to read this article and we're going to say do i need to learn omar do you think do i need to learn all the new words here in this in this article do you need all those words no only oh. no we can prioritize 
uh, by relevant to you. So we picked the topic that is relevant. Now let's 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 get some assistance from hi. <laughs> uh, welcome back. No problem. Um, so we're gonna take the this this web uh, this article, and we're actually going to copy and paste it. And I'm going to copy and paste it onto chat GPT. And I'm going to tell it, please prioritize um, and create a list of words that will help. What, what level of English do you think you are, Omar? Um. Real one. Yeah, let's let's crank it up a little bit. Um, a B two level student. Create. Uh, please prioritize and create a list of words that will help her from this article. And I copy and paste the article. So now it's giving me. 20 words that I can focus on. And then I can say, hmm, make a table with the definition, the pronunciation, uh, an example, and the Spanish translation. Okay. <laughs> and now we have prioritized the learning. It's not the same learning that maybe it's important for Claudia. You are prioritizing. So just to recap, Claudia, we are one of the do's is to prioritize the learning. Don't learn everything. Learn the words that are very frequent for you and that are very relevant to you. So in this example, we found uh, an article about green hydrogen that it's relevant to Omar. And then we went to chat GPT and asked, hey, give me relevant words for my level. And there we go. Now we are prioritizing. Now we're making the situations about me and we're prioritizing. That's really good. Um, what other situations should you avoid? Okay, Claudia, uh, now that you're back, tell me, when was the last time that everything in your life for a day began with the letter A? <laughs> they worked? Is yeah. the letter A? Uh-huh. I don't know, Apple? Yeah. <laughs> but for example, on Mondays, you only see words that begin with letter A? No. I don't remember. Life, life doesn't organize things alphabetically. Real life, you know, in your job yes. today, your email doesn't have only words that have A. No. Your email has all the words, all the letters. So one thing that you should avoid is vocabulary, vocab lists that are in alphabetical, alphabetical order. Avoid these. Don't 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 learn from lists that are alphabetical. That is very unnatural and very inefficient. Because most of the time when we are learning new vocabulary from a list, we have limited energy. It's like Omar was talking about uh, <laughs> green hydrogen. The same thing, we have limited calories and we have limited attention. And what happens when you learn lists alphabetically is that maybe you have a great focus and great energy for the first five words. 
But then uh, the last words, maybe when you are talking, learning the V or learning the T or the S words, you don't have as much energy. And so you don't learn those words as effectively. So that's a very, very, very bad strategy to learn vocabulary. A much better, um, a much, much, much better, mm. much, yeah, a much better alternative um, from alphabetical lists, if you're going to learn vocabulary, is learn words yeah. by groups. What do you mean by groups? <laughs> um, let's do an experiment, Claudia. Um, what do you like to do for fun? Fun? For fun, yeah. Uh, I I like. Yeah. Uh, in this moment, I like to do exercise. Work out. Okay. I. I what type? Is CrossFit. <laughs> CrossFit. Oh my God. I practice all days. I practice CrossFit. I saw a very funny video today because it's a, a husband and a wife and uh, the husband says, oh, I'm really tired from all the CrossFit. And the wife says, no, the pronunciation is croissant. <laughs> you ate 15 croissants, so you're tired. And he says, oh, no, the pronunciation is CrossFit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, so, OK, let, let's let's learn uh, something from CrossFit. So one of my favorite things to do to learn a language or to learn anything is to not learn the language. <laughs> instead of, <laughs> so we're going to do an experiment here. Um, instead of going on YouTube, for example, and saying, learn English. Don't do that. Um, uh, learn CrossFit. OK. And so we're going to learn something that is very interesting for me, maybe. Uh, maybe you're not a, a, a beginner, but maybe, yeah, let's, let's do this workout. This is a 16-minute workout. It's a Tabata. Tabata uh, exercise. I'm sure you're familiar with Tabata exercises. Uh, and I'm going to play the video. And this man is going to begin speaking. And he's going to say, we're going to start with a dumbbell snatch. We're going to be doing four Tabatas in back to back <laughs> for 16 minutes. We're going to start with a dumbbell snatch. It's just like you, Omar. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. In my, uh... this, is, this is the reason for I, I good. I... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You like I the like to go there to the gym. Yes. This is the reason for I like to go to the gym. <laughs> yeah. But imagine, imagine that we are going to uh, learn from this. So you're learning CrossFit, but you're looking at the sentences, and uh, we're not going to listen to the video, but I'm going to play the video uh, and you're going to read the subtitles. When you see a word that is interesting to you, tell me what the word is and we will do the experiment with that word. Warm it. Esa palabra, ¿no? yeah. Con yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. So that's a, a great word. So imagine that we're going to focus on uh, warm up, something like this, warm up. And we can look for the definition of warm up, of course. But what I want to do is now to create a group of words that I can learn that are related to warm up, not an alphabetical list. A, a list of words that are related to each other. And we are we can do this in, in a couple different ways. So let's go to ChatGPT, who is going to be our assistant today. And we're going to say, hey, um, I'm interested 
in learning uh, English very effectively. And for that, um, I will need you to provide uh, lists of words that are related to each other. Uh, can you create uh, a group of four or well, let's say five words or expressions? Remember that learning English is not only learning words, but also phrases mm -hmm. that are related to, and then we can say warm up. And let's see. Okay, good. So now we have a list of words. Uh, so now what I'm interested in to learn more effectively is to learn by groups and we can associate things in in two different ways uh, we can do synonyms or we can do sounds or visually similar so synonyms is pretty easy because i can ask this okay please give me at least two good synonyms for each word, but then, and one antonym, because a good way to learn is to learn the opposite. Oh, okay. So now we have some interesting thing. Let's look at this word. Can you give me the pronunciation of this word, Claudia? Lengthen. Lengthen. Yeah, remember that the TH is like that. Lengthen. 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 Yeah, lengthen is to make something more long. Lengthen. Lengthen. Oh, that's a really good word for us. Uh, exercise, <laughs> workout, train. And the anthem, rest, take it easy. Yeah. So this kind of lists are way more effective than alphabetical lists. If I give you a list of alphabetical terms to use for CrossFit, you're mm -hmm. going to learn three words and then you're going to get tired. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So yeah, do is, is, is that. Um, and then the other one that you can tell it to do is um, let's focus uh, on expressions. very natural and native like expressions for this topic ah now now we're going to learn the real english because it says this one let's get the blood flowing Hagamos que la sangre empieza a correr, fluya. But of course, that doesn't make any sense in Spanish. So what it means is to warm up, is to get acclimated. And actually, you can use this in business. Mm -hmm. A student of mine today wrote me, oh, I'm traveling because I have a meeting with my team for, um, he said, uh let me tell you exactly what he said he said uh we're doing team building activities we're creating a team yes. perfect so you can begin the training session say okay everybody let's get the blood flowing and you put an exercise uh you give them an exercise to do as a team uh let's loosen up loosen up is uh, similar to relax Sometimes when you're very stressed at work, it's difficult to make decisions. So you can tell somebody in business, hey, loosen up a bit. Relájate. Loosen up. Yeah. So really, 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 really good strategy. Loosen up. 
cógela suave, how they yeah. say. This is a phrasal verb. Santa Marta. Or no. Loosen up, yeah. It's a phrasal verb and an expression. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Loosen up. So, <laughs> awesome. So we can learn things by the synonym, by how they sound, by how they look, and also by how they feel. How do you feel when you exercise? Uh, <laughs> very excited. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Very excited, yes. I feel uh, so good and excited when I work out. Can you tell me other expressions? When when finish the work. <laughs> yeah. When, when I am this, when, because <laughs> when I start the activities is very, very difficult. It's a, it's a, a fight my mind with my body. Is, <laughs> you don't. <Yeah. laughs> So I can tell it, hey, it feels so good. I feel so good and excited when I finish working out. Can you tell me other expressions related to that feeling? So now it's saying, on cloud nine, say this expression, Omar. I feel on cloud nine when I finish. Uh, on cloud nine? Yeah, it's like you're in heaven. Yes. Ah, OK. I feel on cloud nine when, and then finish the sentence. When do you feel on cloud nine? Do you feel on cloud nine when you finish working out? For, question for me or for Claudia? No, for you, Omar. When do you feel on cloud nine? When do you feel very, very happy and light? Uh, when we in Santa Fe, Cito Lindo. Ah, beautiful <laughs> sentence, yeah. The beautiful day and the next yeah. day. Excellent. I, so, I have a plan now. <laughs> so we're integrating this and we're going to say, okay, we're going to make it about me and I'm going to create a sentence about me when Santa Fecito <laughs> Win. wins. Remember that it's wins because it's one, one team. Uh, when Santa Fecito wins, I feel on cloud, cloud nine. nine. Look at this. So now you're learning the real, real English, but you're doing it in your own terms in a way that it's about you. Yeah. Um, so we want to prioritize. We want to learn by groups and associate. We want to avoid artificial uh, situations. We want to avoid this. Mm, very structured settings. And one more thing that we want to avoid is... Um, translate? No, actually translating is not bad. No, you don't want to avoid to, to translate, but you do want to avoid... Um, I'm gonna put it in 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 the most natural. Cookie cutter is an expression in English. Cookie cutter is uh, un molde de galleta. Ah, okay. Yeah. So you want to avoid the cookie cutter. El molde de galleta tipo de material de aprendizaje de inglés. It's actually very bad for you. <laughs> um, it's funny because it's made for you, for you to learn like this, this type of exercises, uh, the cookie cutter mm -hmm. classes, the cookie cutter material, um, the cookie cutter books, English learning material, because this type of material organizes things in a simple way that is different from the real English. Let me give you an example. Um, uh, let me ask Omar, why do you want to learn English? I, I want to learn English, but uh, for two reasons, I I want uh, 
to better job. Um, mm -hmm. And I want, I want can speak English fluency. Yeah, meet a, a very beautiful girl at the beach in yes. <laughs> in California. Uh, <laughs> and for, while, for, for example, <laughs> while Claudia is at the CrossFit lesson with <laughs> with this guy. Yeah, yeah. Nice. <laughs> 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 um, okay. I do like what you are this <laughs> shape. In, um, in this moment, I I lost some opportunities. Mm. Oh, for for don for for don speak English very well. Um, yeah. And my goals, my goal is learn and practice and practice and my personal goal is i can you can, can yeah <laughs> i can you speak. can you can do it so what do i mean by by avoiding this cookie cutter uh, english learning material for example duolingo duolingo is really good it's good practice but it's not effective practice again because you are learning many things that are not about you and uh, things that are oversimplified and you don't want to oversimplify your learning when i ask you this question as an english teacher i say why do you want to learn english and every word is very clear and it's very organized but Pay attention to the way that we speak Spanish. We in Bogota, we say our Spanish is perfect. But mm -hmm. really, if you pay attention, pay attention when you get on the bus, when you get on Transmilenio, when you talk to people on the street, how do people speak? We don't speak, why do you want to <laughs> learn English? Oye, ¿y usted cómo para qué eso? <laughs> you know, the, uh, absolutely the same thing happens with English. Um, when you go into the real world, into a real job interview, people don't say, why do you want to learn English? So learning English from this type of material will not prepare you for the real, real situation because you know if i'm asking you this very same question in a real interview i under, I, I understand this situation because when i need to answer the email uh, mm -hmm. with other person in english uh, when i start to write i i uh, i'm i start writing with similar i speak in spanish yes mm -hmm. and it's very formal my my writing but uh, the other uh, the other partners say, uh, tell, say me mm -hmm. tell me tell me the other partner tell me uh, no no it's necessary to uh, write all words is is yes no and no yes. more Hi. <laughs> they're this very is, to the point this yeah. is the file attached no more <laughs> yeah, yeah. Please find the file attached. Yeah, absolutely. But not only that, but, uh, you know, like if, if I asked you this very same question in real English, I, I might say something like, how come you're interested in learning English? Um, how come means why? Uh, and then I use contractions. And I don't say every individual word. I don't say, how come you are interested? I say, how come you're interested in learning English? How come you're interested in learning English? Yeah. And so you shouldn't, you shouldn't learn. Why do you want to learn it? It's, it's good for you. Of course, it's good for you if you learn it. But it's more effective if you challenge yourself with how come you're interested in learning English? And so the question is, okay if i should avoid this cookie cutter material if i shouldn't do the duolingo no do the duolingo but also go to real materials 
real, real materials. You know, so uh, imagine what is a real material? What do I mean by a real material? Um, Uh, podcasts, interviews. A real, a real podcast, a real interview. So look at this. I, I, I was Googling with the topic that you mentioned earlier, the World Hydrogen Energy Conference 2023. Mm -hmm. That's a real thing. That's a real, real conversation that people had. And if you go on their website, you're going to tell it in English, please. <laughs> 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 because otherwise it's not uh, very interesting for us. Uh, and then um, we're going to say, let's look at the speakers. Yeah. Uh, okay. This guy, Aldo, Peretti, Alfredo Vinaco, Andres Leve from uh, Valenzuela, from Chile. Let's pick somebody who will uh, maybe this guy, Christian? No, I didn't like this because I think there's many, many people from from Latin America. <laughs> so let's go, let's find a different resource. Sometimes it takes a, a couple tries. So let's go on the second website. Yeah. Yes, Omar, Omar take the course, hydrogen course in uh -huh. this one. Uh, in yeah. English, but the 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 speakers is, uh -huh. uh, is she is Spain Spanish Spain Spain ah Spain yeah woman, yes but mm -hmm. in this in this case is is very easy to understand because yeah. she talk uh, she talk in, in with an accent Spanish and when the, the the accent is very similar when with us yeah 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 this is uh this is something really 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 cool because um english there's lots of accents in english um and so that's also the problem sometimes when we learn um uh, english so what i did is take this guy i picked the most random person yoshi moose mm. and i went on google and we're gonna say interview okay and there he is but in german <laughs> mr moot as many countries are facing a major financial crisis they have cut down their subsidies for renewable energies what impact does this have yeah, thanks a lot, first of all. Um, I believe what we need to bear in mind is when supporting renewables, we'll just... Okay, so this is very clear, it's yeah. very good, but it's real English because he's not simplifying his language for an English learner. He's simplifying the language for an audience and he's speaking clearly, which is good for us, but he's using the real, real language. And if I turn on the subtitles here, I'm going to see lots of things. We need to bear in mind. Let's look at this sentence. I'm not only learning about the topic. Of course, the topic is important, but I'm learning. Omar said, I need to get a better job. Part of yeah. getting a better job is being more confident with presentations, for example. Uh, perfect for presentations because he's saying, I believe what we need to bear in mind, this is a sentence that you can literally memorize and use in your own presentation. Yo creo que una de las cosas que deberemos considerar yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Turn off the light. They're, <laughs> they're kicking you out, Claudia. <laughs> it's time to go home. I, I alarm like, in my office. I alarm in my office and the, the lights turn uh -huh. off 
when Don sends the movies. Yes. Yeah. The next, the next thing that will happen is that they're going to play La Maldita Primavera at the end. <laughs> so it'd be like, time to leave. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is a sentence that you can memorize. I believe that we need to bear in mind, creo, creo que es importante tener en consideración Blah, blah, blah. I believe what we need to bear in mind is green hydrogen. Beautiful. Now you're ready to begin your presentation. So we are learning for one minute. And this sentence is more important than the English chapter or the Duolingo or the whatever vocabulary list. This is going to be more useful for you. And you don't need to study for three hours. You need to study for five, 10 minutes, but very, very focused on something that you're going to need for yourself. So in summary for today, we're going to prioritize. We're gonna learn things that you're going to see very frequently. You're gonna learn things that are relevant to you, uh, either by interest or by your professional needs or your personal needs. Uh, you're not going to learn all the words. You don't need to learn. Uh, in English, we have 32,000 words. We don't need 32,000 words to learn English. Uh, you need only maybe 2,500 words. Okay. Uh, with 2,500 words, you can speak English. You can work in English with 2,500 words. Okay. Yeah. So you need to focus your attention don't try to learn all the words try to learn the words that you need try to learn by groups by synonyms by topic by sound by feel sensation remember that language was invented to communicate our sensations so we cannot learn without the sensations and the feelings uh, and then you're going to practice with real, real material, not fake material. We're going to avoid artificial situations, worksheets, these type of repetitive exercises. Don't, if you want to do it, do it, but make it about you. Change the example from London is in England to Bogota is in Colombia or Claudia is at work uh, or Santa Fecito wins when I feel on cloud nine, right? Um, you're going to avoid alphabetical and very cookie cutter things. And you're going to um, learn by groups and you're going to avoid all these not real situations, things that don't apply to you. Sometimes you can get the assistance. I want to practice. Oh, okay and practice with the artificial intelligence. It's not going to replace a teacher. It's not going to replace the real situation, but it's really good to practice with this. You can create lists, you can create, you can tell it to correct you. You can tell it to be your, your, your practicing buddy and you can begin a conversation and it will ask you questions. Uh, if you want to practice, um, a little bit you're speaking, there is this website that I recommend uh, called Transy. Uh, and Transy has, uh, for example, this this topic, a job interview. But if you have a reactor, the, the, the other application is yeah. mismatch, is conflict with, with the with the two application yeah maybe you can uh, have this one in a different browser you can get creative oh, okay. okay yeah um but this is nice because um you can practice talking which is something you can't do in other applications so um hello welcome to our university can you please introduce yourself So you can listen to it, but then you can also practice. Uh, and so I'm going to exaggerate and say this very badly and say something like, sure, my name is John Smith. I am from the New York City and I just graduated a high school. I am excited to be here for the interview. 
Tour. My name is John Smith. I am from the New York City and I just graduated a high school. I am excited to be here for the interview. And so, of course, I exaggerated a little bit, um, <laughs> but it tells me where are my problem areas? Um, what are the words that maybe I didn't say that I, or maybe what are the words that I, I said but are not part of the text uh, that are really good? Sure. If I click on it, it tells me the correct pronunciation. Don't say sure, say sure. 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 It gives me the definition. It gives me alternatives. It gives me a lot of uh, things that I can sure. use. Sure. 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 And I can practice again until I get 100%. And uh, it's, an, it's a great way to practice your real pronunciation. So uh, this is not going to be exactly like the real world, but it's a better approximation than learning from the traditional material. So um, and these were uh, some of the ideas that I have for you today. Do you have any questions about it? No, thank you, Juan. Um, <laughs> I, I, I think um, for the uh, your 